How's it going everyone? I hope you enjoyed that short promo video that I shot with some friends. I'm very excited to announce a project that I've been working on for the past year or so. First, let me start with some backstory about me. My name's Tom, I'm a cinematographer based in Los Angeles, and I'll play some of my work on screen here so you can see what I've been up to. But anyways, being in LA, I'm fortunate to be near some of the top rental houses and film labs. So at this point, I've shot a decent amount of 16mm and 35mm film. I also have quite a bit of experience working as a colorist and have always had a deep interest in color science. So in January of 2023, I decided to combine my interests and the various resources available to me and I put together an extensive camera test with some friends where we used a variety of different film stocks and digital cameras to capture color charts, skin tones, and every range of exposure and extreme saturation lighting possible. And then I was able to take all of that data and match the digital footage to each film stock using all native tools in DaVinci Resolve. So all of that resulted in brand new film emulations that I've started to use in some of my work. So to give a little more info about the film stocks, we shot Kodak 500T, Kodak 250D, and Fuji 160T. Now 500T and 250D are both popular and common modern film stocks that are still produced by Kodak and used on all sorts of productions today. But what I'm especially excited about is the Fuji emulation, because that film stock is not produced anymore. The Fuji Eterna series of motion picture negative films was discontinued over a decade ago, so it's kind of a niche thing and it's hard to get your hands on well-preserved stock. And if you don't know about Fuji 160T, some of the notable films shot on that stock include The King's Speech, Black Swan, and Slumdog Millionaire. Now even if you did get your hands on well-preserved stock, it's impractical to shoot on any actual production today due to the elevated development costs since at this point in time and age the remjet layer is much harder to remove and the stock requires extra cleaning and it just gets too expensive. So with this emulation I'm hoping that it preserves the color science of that film stock and makes it available to more people moving into the future. Another thing I want to highlight is that I made sure to maximize quality at every step of the process. So after shooting the camera test, the film was developed and scanned at Photochem in Burbank to ensure that the emulations were getting industry standard photochemical and scanning color science. If you're not familiar with Photochem, they are the lab that pretty much every major Hollywood production in LA that is shooting on film goes to. Probably the most notable recent example would be Oppenheimer. Now with all that backstory explained, let me show you a brief example of how I graded the intro sequence of this video. So just to show you guys the grading process of that intro video, Here's the original Blackmagic Pocket 6K footage. And then what I did was I went and applied the Fuji 160T emulation, uh, specifically the 1.4 Blackmagic uh, Gen 5 color science. And then once that was applied, I brought up the exposure here just to get a little more information on the subject and then I turned on this pre-contrast node which lowers our contrast prior to the emulation and feeds a little more info into that central range of the emulation then I increased the pre-contrast a tiny bit turned on post contrast pushed that up quite a bit somewhere around here and then from there um, I'm white balancing with the offset wheel, keeping an eye on skin tones, and bringing some blue into the background. And somewhere there looks good. 
Um, I also turned on this pre-split node, which is turning on split toning in the shadows prior to the emulation. So it has a little more of a baked in feel. And if I go full screen, you can see what that's doing to the shadows. It's bringing out a lot of those blues. And then I counteracted that a little bit in the primaries section here under log wheels by pushing a bit more warmth into the shadows. And then I brought those log shadows up a tad. And now if we full screen, you can see where we're at with that. And I can toggle on those log wheels and you can see what that's doing to the shadows and also the skin tones. It's definitely bringing a lot more life into the skin tones in the shadows here. And I'm definitely liking that effect. So next I think I will just turn on our denoise here to get rid of a little bit of the color noise from the digital image. And then I'll turn on dust here. And then one more thing, I think I'll go back to my pre-contrast and boost that a little bit more just so we're not too flat. And let's check that out full screen. Great. So something I want to highlight with these power grades is their saturation response. So here you're looking at 4 perf 35mm Fuji 160T and this is pure red channel lighting from Aperture Nova P300 and 600C lights. So this is how film sees high saturation red lighting. Now let's compare that to this is how an Ari Alexa sees the red lighting when converted to a standard Rec. 709 image. You can see the reds are very bright and there's a lot of blue channel bleeding in. Even though there is no blue light, the blue channel is getting exposed still and that's causing some magenta tints in our image. Now here is that exact same footage but with the Fuji emulation. So the color information has been remapped to respond more like film. So for different hues, as exposure and saturation approach a certain level, they will respond in a different way and information from other color channels will get compressed into a different color channel for the sake of responding in a more filmic way. And then lastly, I just want to show how this is consistent across different cameras. Here is the Alexa footage with the Cineprint 35 160T emulation. And then here is Sony footage. So you can see between the Sony and Alexa footage, the saturation is mapped extremely similarly. And you could match this footage in a project. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed those brief example clips. If you're interested in seeing the emulations being used on additional footage from different cameras in Resolve, you can check out a separate walkthrough video on my channel, which I'll link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching.